In King's Cross in Sydney, it's another night when it will feel close to freezing. Another night Chris Thompson, better known as Taz, will sleep on the street. The last two weeks have been incredibly, um, incredibly cold. Cardboard and newspapers are your best friend when you're on the street. <laughs> It's hard to rest for long. When dawn breaks, the world comes to life. You get woken up early as people start to set up and, and head to work and, and stuff like that. But that's all part and parcel. This wasn't how Taz lived during the peak of the pandemic. I, I spent the pandemic up on the, 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 the ninth balcony up there in the middle. It was awesome. And um, when the government pulled their finger out and put, put us all into hotels around Sydney. To comply with lockdowns, governments had to provide places for the homeless to isolate. For rough sleepers, that meant being provided with largely hotels, uh, hotel type accommodation. In Australia's cities, the impact of emergency accommodation for the homeless was profound. In three capital cities, the number of people sleeping rough fell markedly as emergency accommodation became available. When the lockdowns ended, so did the hotel programs. In Sydney, Taz was placed in a social housing unit. But for the long-term homeless, providing a roof overhead isn't enough. Without support to manage guests and belongings, he's back on the streets. That's what happens when you help someone out. At the moment, I, I, I suppose I've fallen between the cracks again. Um, I'm used to that. In regional Victoria, Sam Grenfell also knows what it's like to be homeless. During the pandemic, she and her son had to leave an unsafe home and had nowhere to go. Just the emotions just goes through your head, you know, especially um, someone at my age, people get this image of so-called homeless people, that they're um, either druggies or that type of person, but we're not, we're just everyday people. Sam and her son spent months on the move. They stayed at a series of low-rent motels, including this one on the edge of town. What does it feel like when you come back here? What was it like when you reached this stage? Pretty devastating, actually. I didn't feel safe here at all. There were seedy characters walking around. We had a lady walking up and down, yelling at our, outside our window that she's going to kill someone. In the midst of the pandemic, Sam was eventually placed in a unit provided by a state government program to help the homeless. She's now moving to a permanent place. Victoria's program provides not only homes, but vital support for everyday life. You can give somebody a house, but if they don't have the life skills, the chances of them reaching a full recovery are far less. With rents rising and the housing stock lagging demand, advocates fear homelessness is set to grow. But there's an important lesson in the pandemic. We saw when we didn't want the population to become homeless, that we provided accommodation. We have shown that we can do it. Let's keep going. For those who received that accommodation, it was a revelation. When the government decides to do something, they can do it. So, yeah. But Taz and others experiencing long-term homelessness face complex challenges. They need housing and day-to-day -day support to help make the most of their lives and their talent. Norman Hermont, ABC News.